So welcome, everybody. I'm so absolutely delighted to welcome you to an introduction to touch-free Alexander Technique for musicians and music lovers. That's not just for musicians, although I do specialize in teaching musicians. Occasionally, I work with non-musicians, but really, for the most part, I, as a musician and an Alexander Technique teacher, really have decided to focus and go all in in helping musicians of all kinds, amateurs, professionals, you know, anything goes. So you are in the right place if you love music. I promise to share with you how you can enjoy music more, whether you are a musician or I want to say just a music lover, but it's not just. I mean, we need listeners just as much as we need musicians. So if you're not a musician, if you're a photographer like Janice over there, <laughs> I'm so happy that you're here. And um, yeah, there are so many wonderful things about the Alexander Technique. It is for anyone and everyone on the planet. Here are some ways I think about the Alexander Technique. It is a wonderful, amazing, incredible way to take care of yourself. It's an awareness technique. It helps you become aware of habits that you might have, of how you think, how you move, how you go about doing the things that you do. And by becoming more conscious of your habits, in everyday life and in the things that you do, you have an opportunity to choose different ways of doing things. So the first thing is it's an observational technique. It's a way to get to know yourself better. And by observing yourself and experimenting and finding new ways to think, you get to discover new ways to move and live and love your life. Alexander Technique is also a skills improvement method. Uh, you know, I work with musicians. We have very specific, precise skills that we're working on all the time. So sometimes people come to me because they have pain or because they have performance anxiety, but sometimes they just really want to get better at playing the violin or playing the saxophone like Glenn over there, or making music on the piano or singing or conducting or composing. So it really doesn't matter what the activity is. And for you non-musicians, it's like, how do you do whatever it is you wanna do better with more ease? We're learning how to do less, less of what's not necessary. We waste a lot of energy in how we think about things, a lot of our thoughts, I'd say most of our thoughts are unnecessary. And they actually can be unhelpful thoughts, like fear-based thinking, self-doubt, thoughts that say, I'm not good enough, or I'm never gonna be able to do this, or I should be further along now. Who can relate to those? <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for your honesty. I know from experience that most people, if not all people, have some kind of doubt monsters. That's my tongue-in-cheek word for these negative thoughts, right? We all have doubt monsters. And that's actually human. It's normal. We're not trying to get rid of the doubt monsters, but we want to see them more, observe them, and get to know the, them and say, hello, goodbye, and do something else instead. Right. If you're thinking thoughts that are not helpful, they're per, they're maybe repetitive, they're fear-based, they are putting yourself down, they're making yourself smaller. Uh, all those types of thoughts are going to interfere with the ease and the natural design with which you live your life and engage in your activities. So the Alexander technique is a way to learn how to stop thinking in ways that get in your way to really clarify what you want 
most of us have conflicting ideas and competing ideas going through our heads all the time. Oh, I want to just relax in front of the television. Now I have to take out the garbage. No, blah, blah. And so there's constant conflict inside of us, which increases overall tension levels in the mind and the body, and you can't separate those. So there are a number of principles in the Alexander Technique. Um, I'm not going to cover them all. That would take too long. But I just want to throw out there a very important one. It's about mind-body unity. You cannot separate the mind and the body and the emotions and your creative spirit. You cannot separate those. Well, I, I, maybe you can separate. I don't know. Let's just stick with mind-body unity. <laughs> <laughs> you can't separate the mind and the body. And here's why. When you have an idea, it may be out in the ether somewhere. I don't know where an idea is, but as soon as you're conscious of it, guess what? It's in your brain. And then it's neurons firing and wiring together and stimulating chemistry that goes through your body and your bloodstream. And so as soon as you have a thought, it's physical. You cannot have a thought without your body. And you can't have an emotion without your body. My partner, boyfriend, Mio Morales, he is the creator of a branch of Alexander technique called Primal Alexander. He's always talking about how you can't have an emotion without your body. That comes directly from Mio from his form of Alexander teaching called Primal Alexander. That's the form of Alexander that I teach. Those are the practical ways that I deliver the Alexander Technique principles and experiences without touch online. And so big shout out to Mio, who's not here, but he, <laughs> he's created all kinds of amazing things that I now have shared with hundreds of musicians to help them you know, feel better and play better. So that's where this is coming from. The Alexander Technique is traditionally taught with the hands, but Alexander himself taught for years without touch. Long story short, Alexander had performance issues as an actor. He got hoarse on stage and he couldn't get help from any specialists or doctors. They didn't know what to do. There was nothing wrong with his vocal mechanism. So uh, over a number of years, he experimented, he observed himself and he made all kinds of really great discoveries about how the mind and the body work together as a whole. And he discovered that when he was thinking in a certain way, he would cause his system to shrink. He'd cause tension in the head and the neck and he'd pull down and get really tight and then he'd get hoarse. So when he figured that out, he realized, oh, I just need to stop doing that. <laughs> really logical. But then when he tried to stop doing it, he couldn't. So he had to do more experimenting, more figuring out what was going on until finally he realized he needed to let go. And he discovered how to let go with his whole system. We talk a lot about letting go in our culture these days. There's a lot of talking about meditation and mindfulness and letting go and self-care, self-improvement. It's really mainstream now. I mean, when I was a kid, I would meditate without knowing what I was doing, but nobody was talking about meditation. And now you go to the grocery store and it's on the tabloids, right? And it's like meditation is everywhere. The Alexander Technique has meditative aspects also, which is wonderful, but it's a really distinct modality. The way I think about it as being different, well, there are a lot of things that are different about it, but I love it in part because it instantly, especially Primal Alexander, I'll say, Primal Alexander, students can instantly, literally from day one, and you're gonna do it today, we're going to experience this together in a few moments. People can integrate how they're thinking, the mind with the body, with the emotions, with the whole self, soul, spirit, whatever you wanna include, whatever you believe is you, it's integrating right away with this process. Whereas with some other modalities, it's more separate you're looking at one area of your life or you know you go to a massage therapist or a chiropractor or a physical therapy you're looking at the body primarily 
you go and meditate, most of the time your eyes are closed and you're shutting out the world. And I love meditation. I'm not criticizing that at all. I'm just saying it's different from what we're doing in the Alexander technique because we're learning how to do that, but also be open to the world and engaged with the activities that we're doing. So that as a musician, for example, you can be more open and receptive to the sounds coming to you from your colleagues and from your own instrument. You are more open and receptive to experiencing the energy in your audience. You can see the conductor if your eyes are open. You can see the notes on the page. If you're at home alone in the practice room and there's nobody else there, you get to be more open and receptive to what you're seeing on the page, the notes. So all of our senses are open to our experience, both internally, our thoughts and feelings, and we're also more open to everything happening around us. One of my favorite quotes from Alexander is this one, quote, mine is a method for the control of human reaction, end quote. So in a nutshell, that's what the Alexander technique is. We are learning how to first notice our reactions, and then we get to choose. If you like them, keep doing what you've been doing. If you don't like how you're responding to something, if you get triggered and you have a startle response, maybe you go into fight, flight, freeze, or fawn mode, and you kind of close down a little bit. Maybe you go on stage, uh, you're on stage and you're gonna perform for a thousand people, but part of you is like, please don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, you're sort of running out there, let, let's get to it. And then you start playing. It's like, you can hear me, but please don't look. There are a lot of musicians that are terrified to go on stage. And so the practices that we do with Primal Alexander, which are called awareness etudes, that's what we're, we're gonna start doing in a few minutes. These etudes allow you to build up a new neural network in your brain that makes it way easier for you to call upon the part of you that can consciously let go of the tightening that happens when you're in a startle response. And you can do it really fast. It's really easy. This technique is incredibly simple and it's incredibly easy, but it can seem really complicated sometimes. And that's another reason I love Primal Alexander because it's really, really simple. And yet it's deep. It's something that addresses everything. And that's why you know, I will keep doing this for the rest of my life, I'm sure. Um, I didn't tell you about me, but you can go to my website if you're curious about who I am. Um, I didn't even say, I'm Jennifer Roy Francoli. <laughs> I think you know that or you wouldn't be here. <laughs> but um, if you're curious to read more about me, if you don't know anything and you just somehow luckily found the link and here you are, um, you can go to my website. It's www.artoffreedom.me. My signature system is the art of freedom method for conscious living and masterful artistry. And it includes the Alexander technique. It's pure Alexander technique. All the principles are covered. And then the practical way I deliver that is primal Alexander, touch free. But I put it into a huge context. And the five life pillars of the art of freedom method are purpose, mind, body, spirit, and artistry. And whether you're a musician or not, all of these apply to you because really it's about the art of living and how you move, how you think. It's an art that you can get better at, but you don't have to work at. You just, you, know, you observe. And it's, the Alexander technique is a subtraction technique. You're getting rid of the stuff that you don't need that gets in the way. So I'm also a violinist, professional violinist. I've been a violinist since I was four. Um, I've had a very nice career, especially as a kid and teenager. I've played in Carnegie Hall many times. I was in Time Magazine. I've won international awards. I've played with international orchestras as a soloist, et cetera. That's all on my website. So anyway, that's who I am. I teach and coach musicians with private and group programs. Um, but anyway, so got that out of the way. Now you know who I am. <laughs> All right. So I think the best way to learn about the Alexander technique is to actually do some of it. 
And so let's just dive in. And I promise I'm watching the clock. So we're going to do some of this, but I'm going to leave a little bit of time at the end um, to answer some questions and tell you about you know, maybe some next steps that you could take if you want to learn more, since this is a really short intro. There's very little that I can actually do with you in such a short time. But my hope is that you'll have an actual experience that makes you curious, that piques your curiosity and makes you interested in maybe looking at what else could be next. Okay, so I'll tell you about that towards the end. All right, so let's dive in. I'm gonna sort of abbreviate each thing that we do today in the interest of time. With everything that I do, I would probably take more time in an actual class. Just so you know, these are abbreviated little tastes. You can think of it, this is a tapas course. We're doing a little tapas, <laughs> okay? <laughs> like a Spanish meal, a little taste here and there. So let's start out by doing an experiment. In Primal Alexander, it's always an experiment. You never know from one moment to the next, what's gonna happen. And that's the truth always. We never know what's gonna happen next. So let's be like little kids, little young kids who have no idea how the world works and we're just gonna try something out, see what happens, okay? Right now, as you're sitting there, ask yourself, what do I notice about myself? And specifically, What's showing up for me in my body? What is my body delivering to my consciousness? What am I feeling actually with the body? And here's where you get to participate. Feel free to do this so I can see your hand <laughs> or use the raise hand feature if you prefer. But I actually wanna hear some voices today, much more fun than a, a lecture. I think. Yes, Jim, what are you noticing about your body right now? I have tension in my shoulders, blades, and my back. Okay, great. Good. So here's a first tip for everybody. If you're noticing something that might be a little tense or uncomfortable or what we would call negative, just notice it and see if you cannot judge it as good or bad. Or just notice it and be curious about it, okay? So that's great. What's great is that you're noticing it, truly. Whenever you notice something, it's because it's bubbling up to the level of your consciousness. And with this work, with what I'm gonna teach you, it's on its way out. So that shoulder tension might stay the same, it might go away, but noticing it is the first step to allowing it to change, okay? So thank you for sharing that. What else is showing up for anybody else? What's your, what's happening in your body right now? Right now is a new moment. Chris. I'm noticing uh, my neck is kind of stiff, some tension in, in the back of my neck, uh, yeah, a little bit in the shoulders and then some down my, my left back a little bit. Okay. So a little stuff going on here and down the back. Great, thank you, Chris. How about one more person? What are you noticing in your body? Better watch out, I'm gonna start calling on people. <laughs> yes, Christiane. I'm yawning and I'm releasing some tension. Yes, okay. are you tired? Yeah, but but it was like like looking into, and so I I felt my body wanted to release something, and so I was yawning. That's I guess awesome. good. And well, of course, you're six hours later. Probably it's nine thirty for you, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Time for bed soon. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. So whatever anybody noticed, now is the fresh moment. So I want you to ask yourself again. What's showing up for me now? So don't get stuck in any one area with your attention. One of the things we can learn is that we have control over where we place our attention. 
So what we're doing right now is we're practicing something called ima. Ima means now in Japanese. This is a primal Alexander pre-awareness etude. It's not technically an awareness etude, it's a practice. But now, what are you noticing? It's again, always now. So ask yourself, what am I noticing in my body right now? And if what you're noticing is in the less desirable category, can you now get curious? Is there a place in my body that feels a little less tense or a little less uncomfortable? If you noticed a pain, is there a place that is a little less painful? And is there a place that's relatively quieter or relatively quiet, relatively comfortable? Is anybody noticing a place that's relatively easy right now? As soon as you ask me to notice these things, I immediately become easier. I can feel that the tension level dropping. Excellent. I love that. As soon as you get curious about noticing what's happening in your body, you know how to find the ease. And what you focus on, you get more of. Okay, that's a really important point. Tim, I love that you put your hand up. What are you noticing? Uh, well, strangely enough, uh, with all this other stuff going on, and yes, I, I didn't want to fess up, but I had some, some tension-related tells earlier, you know, the stuff that you watch if you're interrogating someone. I'm sitting here doing it to myself. But my right knee, which often hurts, has no pain at all right now. So it's kind of weird. I guess I'm distracted from it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's really interesting that you're saying that. Thanks, Tim, for, for braving the microphone with us. <laughs> I really appreciate it. And that, that's so interesting. And let me just say a word about that. There's something really powerful about being in a group situation with people on the same wavelength in this context where we're getting curious about ourselves in the present moment. That's a rare opportunity. How many other times have you been in a group of people that was all at the same time getting curious about their own experience, internal experience in the moment? Probably not very many times. I mean, there can be some times, maybe you go to a church service or um, a meditation gathering, or there can be plenty of other places where people can be on the same wavelength and curious about their own experience. But this is special because we're starting to connect curiosity with our own personal experience in the body in the present moment. And I'll also say that it's different because me personally, I'm doing my best, and now I'm really doing it even better because I'm really paying attention now. It's like, I really want to practice what I preach the best that I can. I can't do that most of the time because I'm human and I have a long way to go. But if I get easier and I start letting go of some extra stuff and I calm down, I know because of the principle of mirror neurons, humans are designed to pick up things from each other. So if I do that, I know that I am positively influencing each of you, even in a tiny way, maybe in a big way. Whereas if I go into my habit and I get really excited about music and I love it and I'm going to teach you like this, can you feel that? I see some nodding. If I teach you like this, and I really want you to get how important and wonderful this stuff is, but I'm so tight when I do that, I'm sure you feel that, okay? So I need to do my work. And if I let go of that, what happens? Yeah, I'm seeing some people, you're feeling different. I mean, this is a no-brainer. We live like this. We're influenced by people all the time, but we don't know it. We're not conscious of it, but it's how it, you all know this. You walk into a room where somebody's angry and yelling, you're going to go into a startle and you're going to feel tight and you're going to want to leave, right? 
Whereas maybe you go into a vacation resort and everybody's relaxing or you go out to the beach and it's like, yeah, it feels good to be around peaceful people, right? So there is something special about being in a community like this, even if it's online with pixels, we are actually real people and there's a real energy and you can actually really pick up on subtle changes in both the teacher and in your peers. So Tim, I don't know why your pain went away like that, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if it had something to do with just talking about these things and getting curious about what's going on in the system. Does that make sense to everybody? You have any questions about what I just said? Does this sound totally off the wall or are you all with me? Does this make sense? This is how we can teach online without touch. This is why the touch is not necessary. And this is how I help you to start noticing what's going on inside of yourself. Once you notice, and you can do that, you can notice, oh, the tension in my neck or my shoulders, oh, the knee or the, my belly is tight. Oh, well, okay, where in my body is there a little less discomfort? Jim, you just got a lot easier when you did that. I don't know if you experienced that, but I saw your whole system kind of let go a little bit there. I just happened to be looking at you, right? And it probably happened to a number of others also. Let me teach you the first awareness etude. Now that you have a sense of how you can come back and get curious about what's going in your body, now I want you to actually forget about that. And you don't have to find anything in your body when we do this next, next etude. Okay. This is called the cycle. This is the first primal Alexander awareness etude created by Mio Morales that I teach all of my students the first day. It's very basic and very powerful. And um, I'm going to give it to you now. And I suggest that you do an experiment. Try it twice a day. Take it like antibiotics. Don't skip a dose. Take it twice a day for five to seven days and Call me in the morning after that. No. <laughs> Just send me a message. Let me know what happens. Okay. Let's do it. All right. So it's very simple. As I said, it's a little meditative. This is one of the only etudes that has very little movement. Okay. We're going to start by holding the thumb really gently, softly, and then rest your hands in your lap or wherever is comfortable so you don't have to hold up your arms. We're going to be cycling through each finger like that, one at a time. But right now we're on the thumb. On each finger, I'm gonna to count to four. And after each number, I'm gonna give you a question. I'm gonna ask the question out loud in first person. You're gonna hear it. And by hearing it, you're asking it for yourself. So I'm basically asking it for all of us. At some point along the way, I'm going to trail off and I'm gonna count on you to remember the question and think it for yourself, okay? Don't worry if you start forgetting it, it does not matter. Just stick with the first couple words that you remember. If I go too fast, who cares? Here's the attitude I want you to do this with. It's carefree. It's not careful. It's not trying to do it right. You're curious like a kid. You have no idea what's going to happen. And you're just wondering. The question is, where else do I seem to be easing a bit? We already did that. And now you don't have to find it in the body. It's even easier than that. You get to ask the question, kind of let it float up and out of you. So it goes in an upward and outward direction. And we're just going to repeat that question after every number. And you might notice your mind wanders, you might get sleepy. It doesn't matter. Just come back to the question with the next number. And very important, keep your eyes open. Unless it's impossible because you're so tired, that's fine. But then have the intention to open them up again as soon as you Okay. And it's early for Glenn in Australia. So we've got like people on different sides of the planet. All right. Okay. So any questions before we do this? You'll get the hang of it. It's very easy. Very simple. Okay. Let's dive in and do it. Starting with the thumb. 
and let the eyes be free. You can look anywhere. Okay. One, where else do I seem to be easing a bit? Two, where else do I seem to be easing a bit? Three, where else do I seem to be easing a bit? Four, where else do I seem to be easing a bit? Index finger. One, where else do I seem to be easing a bit? Two, where else do I seem to be easing a bit? Three, where else do I seem to be easing a bit? Four, where else do I seem to be easing a bit? Little finger. One, where else do I seem to be easing a bit? I don't know, who cares? Let's just keep going. Two, where else do I seem to be easing a bit? Doesn't matter. Three, just curious, where else do I seem to be easing a bit? Four, where else do I seem to be easing a bit? Ring finger. One, where else do I seem? Two, where else? Three, where else? Four, where else? Five, where else? Sorry, that's the fifth finger. One, where else? <laughs> Two, where else do I seem to be easing a bit? Three, where else? Four. Good, let's just pause here for a moment and check in. What is anybody, actually first, just an informal poll, raise your hand if you feel different in any way, in a big way or a tiny way, now after doing just one hand, two hands for Christian. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's pretty unanimous, right? I don't think there was anybody who, and if you didn't feel anything, it's totally fine. So. Luis, your hand is up. Yes. And by the way, I just have to celebrate that we have a member here from East Africa, from Kenya. I am just blown away. I'm so happy. This is so great. Yes, go ahead, Luis. Do you want to share what you noticed doing the cycle? I, I relaxed a bit. I was relaxing. I felt more easy. Like I was relaxed. I was feeling relaxing. Excellent. Great. Yeah. I'm so happy to hear that. Thanks for playing yeah. along. <laughs> That's great. Anybody else notice something they like to share? It was only half of the cycle, and look how everyone's already changing, right? Okay. Let's actually leave it there for now. All right. Since we had such a you know unanimous response, everybody noticed something. Okay. So this is only half of the cycle. When you do the cycle on your own. You want to do both hands twice a day. That's the prescription, right? And don't do it while you're doing something else. Just sit in a chair. You can stand if you want, if you're uncomfortable sitting. Better if you don't lie down, although there are no rules here. This is the art of freedom method. You get to do what you want, right? But I suggest that you do a complete cycle without doing anything else, sitting or standing twice a day, once in the morning, once as a warm up if you're a musician or later in the day. Try not to do it too late in the day because it's easy to get sleepy. Um, here's a tip, people use this as a sleep aid <laughs> and as a cure for insomnia all the time. But when you do the cycle for that purpose, I would suggest you do it more like EMA, have the first pre-awareness A2 that we did where you're actually going down into your body, curious about finding ease in your body not the way we just did it, where you're not going down into your body with your awareness. You're just kind of curious and 
uplifting your thoughts. We want to be awake when we're making music. We want to be awake in life. You want to be curious and lively and joyful, and you don't want to fall asleep unless you need to, <laughs> right? Unless it's good for your body. Um, so that's kind of a, a crash course in the cycle. And there's like way more, way more to the cycle that I could share with you. Um, Wendy, yes, your hands up. I just saw it. I remember doing the cycle with you um, many years ago, I think maybe one of the first, and um, it was a little different than this. Yes. Has it, has it uh, transmogrified uh, or were we doing a different version of the cycle? But yes, the old way still works. It's still fine. Mm -hmm. But yes, this work keeps evolving, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a living work. And the way mm -hmm. you probably learned it in the past may have had a slightly different formulation of the words than now, okay? So yes, Mio Morales has created these primal Alexander awareness etudes and he's always growing and experimenting and working with hundreds of students and testing things out with lots of people. And we've found, he's found, and I've done this with many, many, many people too, we found that this specific formulation of the question which by the way, I strongly recommend that anybody watching this video write it down because 99.9% .9 of people, <laughs> that sounds horrible because it's like there's a 1% per <laughs> part, of, part of a person. Almost everybody thinks they're remembering the right words, but they're actually not. Mm. Right. And even if you are one of the people who are sure you've got it right, write it down because this happens to me all the time where really smart, really intelligent, really wonderful people still get it wrong. And there's a reason for that, but I'm not going to go into it. The words are, just as a reminder, where else do I seem to be easing a bit? So thanks for asking that, Wendy. Yeah, it's the, so these words have been tested out and they have morphed over time. And when I used to teach the cycle years ago, it was more like Ema. It was more about finding a place of ease in the body. Now it's more, that's Ema, that's great. And it does work, but this is better. This is better. And, um, Easing is better because it's a process. It's not a place, it's not a thing, it's not a noun like ease is. Easing is happening and it's happening now. And we are alive and in constant motion. We're constantly being born and dying. We have cells being born and cells dying every moment. We're a different person from moment to moment. And so the ease that we talk about, it's an easing, it's a flow. It's, a, it's an energetic flow, so to speak, that we're getting in touch with. And when we're in touch with easing and we're getting out of the way, we're not blocking it. When we're allowing it to do its natural thing, then all of our organs have more space, our internal functioning like the, this organism functions better we can think better we can have more creative ideas we feel better we have more positive happy hormones you know going through our our system it's like everything that we are designed to be and i believe we're beautifully designed for love and joy and ease and effortlessness and we're designed to move with grace and ease and to share that with the world, but it's, it's hard to do when you're afraid to be seen or you're afraid to be heard. So we need to notice those fears and see how they influence our bodies, see how they make us feel. And then when you do constructive thinking in that instant that you ask, okay, well, where else do I seem to be easing a bit? In that moment, you let go in your entire system. It's not about the head. It's not about the, the neck. It's not about posture. It's not about alignment. It's about how is this unique person designed to function optimally? And yes, the physical head leads the physical body, but what leads the physical head? And yes, structure is absolutely important. 
The physical body is absolutely important, but it's an instrument. We use this physical body. And who is it that uses it? And how do you do that? How do you play your instrument? How do you listen? You don't know. We don't know exactly which muscles we need in any moment for anything. So why don't we just trust that something inside of us does? If there weren't some power inside of me coordinating everything that I'm doing, I wouldn't be able to speak here to you today. And if I were really worried about what you all think, I'd be blocking that and I would be having a harder time getting my ideas across. Right, I've had to work on that. I used to have a terrifying fear of speaking in public. And the Alexander Technique totally changed that. It was pretty amazing. I was gonna write a, a Facebook post this morning, actually, and I'm still gonna write it, um, how I, I failed the, I failed one class in my life. It was health class. That's a big joke. It was in high school. I did not care about that class. All I cared about was the violin. So I failed that class and didn't care and still graduated a year early. <laughs> it's like, but I failed health class and I dropped out of one class in my life, which was public speaking in college. And I was so bad at public speaking, I decided I really needed to take a course. The second class, we were supposed to recite something by memory. I learned it by memory, no problem there. When I went to recite it, blank, total blank. I was so embarrassed, so mortified that I dropped the class. <laughs> and, so, and here I am, it's like another big joke in my life. There's so many of these. Um, here I am publicly going live on Facebook to the universe like, <laughs> and talking about health. I think that's really funny. <laughs> so yes, Jim. Um, I, my violin teacher had taught me how to try and locate tension, focus on it and let it go. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to find ease. It seems like when I count and look for all the places with ease, I just find more pace places with tension. Is the ease what I feel when I let the tension go, or is it just is it just something like meditation that I have to keep it up so that I can find this? Oh, thank you so much for asking this question. I think it's so common for music teachers, and this is not just music teachers, it's in lots of areas. It's really common to get the advice that you've got. Find the tension in a body part and let it go. Okay, so in my experience as a violinist and as a teacher and watching lots of musicians, that doesn't work. And the proof is that most of the time the teacher has to repeat the same instruction week after week after week after year after year and the poor violinist still has shoulder tension and still has wrist tension. And you can say, relax your shoulder till the cows come home until you turn blue in your face. <laughs> yes, you can relax your shoulder in that moment, but it's gonna creep up again and it's gonna happen again. And it's incredibly frustrating, isn't it? Because like you just said, well, there's so much here I could say. I could teach a whole class on this. So I'm looking at the time, <laughs> but here's the quick solution. Do not try to relax a body part. Just don't. You know, I'm not saying she's wrong or he is wrong, but try and experiment once and do it differently because that way probably hasn't worked and it probably hasn't worked for a long time, right? So, or it has maybe sometimes, but not consistently. I don't know. I mean, this is part of the thing is if we're playing music and we seem to be doing fine, how do we know if we need to release tension to have more fluidity if we don't think we're having anything wrong? You know, like, you know, I mean, like Mr. Alexander couldn't talk. I don't have anything like that going. I'm playing music fine. But, you know. <laughs> well, You're very fortunate. Um, and yet, would you like to improve your playing? Well, of course I would, you know. So I don't know if I have, and of course, I would like to not have this tension in my shoulders right now. But on the other hand, I, you know, I've been doing a lot of drawing on the computer and I played my guitar this morning, like always. And, but when I think about it 
And if I look for ease, I don't find ease. I find tension. You know. So how do I find ease? That's the thing. I, I and okay, Janice and I went to an Alexander workshop at our Unity Church last uh, weekend. Okay, and they had a moment there, and he said, "Okay, uh, Jim, did you bring your guitar?" He, anyway. He asked me to play some air guitar. So I play some air guitar. He comes around and he says, try and let your shoulders expand and take up more room. Mm -hmm. And I said, after the thing, I said, well, how am I going to do that? And he said, I can't tell you. You have to figure it out for yourself. It's mm -hmm. like, I, I, I don't know how to approach that, you know, quite. Other than letting go of tension, which is, you know, of trying to maybe, maybe then my shoulders are going to expand more. Um, yes. So I, I, this thing of finding ease is a little mysterious to me. I seem to not find it anywhere. I just see yeah. more tension. Oh, I could let that go. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I hear you. I understand what you're saying. Would you like me to work with you for a moment? Okay. okay. And um, I'm just noticing though, that it's four o'clock. Yeah. And I promised everybody that I would end on time. And so if you, do you have a little more time, Jim? Yes. Okay. So for everybody who would like to stay longer, I'm going to work with Jim. You get all get to watch that. And I told you I would stay longer for questions and whatever goes, I, I don't have anything. It's Sunday afternoon. I love doing this. So I'm just going to stay on and be with all of you. But if anybody needs to go, um, I want to wrap it up now, just really quick. And First of all, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> this is really great that you came today. And I just wanted to let you know that I have cleared my schedule this week and I've blocked off some time for free consultations for anybody watching this video. And if you'd like to schedule a free consultation with me where I can talk to you about whatever you're interested in as a musician or non-musician and maybe give you some thoughts, some advice. And if you're interested in working with me, we could talk about what that would look like, but anything goes. I'd love to meet with you personally, if you want to learn more. That's my gift to Alexander Technique Awareness Month and all of you. Um, the other thing is that I was thinking today, well, what else could I give them? <laughs> and then I thought, you know what? I have a five week introductory course. It's called the Musician's Mind Body Breakthrough. If anybody is a musician, and actually, if you're not a musician, you can just change the language for yourself. It's the same process. Um, so if you're curious in taking an introductory program with me, just reach out to me. This week, I'd like to give 50% off to anybody in this program watching this replay. So just putting that out there, get in touch with me if you're curious. We can talk about that. Um, sign up for a consultation, and I can answer any questions you might have. So yeah, that's, that's it for the official workshop today. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming today. And now let me come back to Jim. So let me just make sure I'm understanding what you shared, Jim. There was a lot there. So in a nutshell, I'm hearing that you're actually happy with what's going on with your playing. You're enjoying that and you're noticing ease, and it's fun, and it's working. First of all, I want to celebrate that. Is that right? Yeah, I guess that's true. I'm happy when I play music. That's great. It makes me feel good. It's part of my life. I need it to feel all right. I have to play. That's great. I feel like a human being, so maybe that's the ease I'm looking for. I guess what I'm confused about is when we do the cycle, and I look through my body, where's the ease? I yes. seem to only find tension. Yes. Okay. So let's work on that. Because I think that's really interesting. And I'm sure you're not alone in that. So working with you on this, I'm sure could be helpful for other people too. So I appreciate your volunteering. Okay. And everybody, you can all do this basically along with Jim for yourselves. All right. So Jim, right now, as you're sitting there, fresh moment. When you bring your curiosity to your body, what are you noticing? Back to the tension in my shoulder blades. Okay, great. So stay with that for a moment. And just notice that tension in your shoulder blades. Okay, great. Now, can you imagine 
that that area of your shoulder blades is like an island. And you know how islands are above the water and then at some point they come down and meet the water and then they kind of merge and then they go under the water, right? Okay, so the area that you're feeling now, can you think of that as an island above the water? Okay. And now can you imagine, kind of travel with your attention, get curious about where the edges of the island might be. Like where, is the, where does the, that discomfort stop? Can you go to the edge in one place? The edge in one place or the edge of the whole circle around the whole of my back, which is where it is. Whatever, you, whatever you can do, go to an edge or the whole edge. Like where does it end more or less? All over the whole area of my shoulder blades on my back. Okay, great. So now can you keep traveling away from that island and see where it becomes water, where you don't feel that tension anymore? Can you get to a place where there isn't that kind of tension in the shoulder blades, a little farther away? Okay, I don't feel it out here on my shoulder. It's up here. Great. So uh, over here, you're noticing relatively less tension than what you feel here, right? Yes. So here is where you're noticing relative ease compared to here. Okay. So this is easing. So to find the ease, do I first have to find the tension? No, except right now, when you're first starting out, okay. you're first starting to learn how to do this. This is, this is a new world, right? Wow. And when you're first learning something, you kind of have to start with the basic like that. But let me ask you this, is there a place in your, is there another place in your body that is a little less uncomfortable than this part of your shoulders. Well, yeah, I feel pretty much okay all over except for the bad part, you know. That the rest of the place where you feel pretty much okay, that's easing. So I should just, as I count my fingers, I should find another place where I'm not feeling tension and I feel that I'm eased. Actually, we're going to make it even easier than that. You don't have to find a place of ease at all when you do the cycle. When you do EMA, which is the first thing that we did, that pre-awareness A2, where we're really doing what we just did with the island, that's called EMA, where you're taking your attention and you're getting curious about what's down there in the body. But when we do the cycle, you kind of want to let go of that. That's right. You actually just did it. <laughs> I did this and your whole, yeah. What are you noticing right now? What are you feeling right now? I feel better. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. You just <laughs> did it. Okay. You know what I think, Jim? My sense from watching you is that there's so much ease in you that you just haven't consciously noticed that it's a little mysterious because it's just, it's there all the time. You know how we say a fish doesn't know it's in water? It's like, you have so much ease in you, you don't, you don't know it. But it, it's worth starting to know it because then you get to consciously create more of it. And then when you have pain like this that you don't like, you're gonna have a skill, a, a series of skills to be able to let go of that. But you don't start here. You don't try to let go of that. What you focus on, you get more of. So I don't think it's a good idea to look for tension unless you're doing EMA and then you move into ease. So that's where I think it's a mistake. And a lot of people have a misunderstanding about how to let go of tension. Don't try to let go of it in a part, go to the whole. And then when you're taking care of letting go of the whole thing, this will take care of itself. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, I think, I think there's so much ease. I mean, you're, you're, you're in a beautiful state. 
there's so much flow and energy and goodness happening in you already but you just want to make it a little more conscious and th this step-by-step -step process would be very valuable for you because then you can apply it to how you're learning your instrument in very specific ways like how to shift with more ease how to do double stops without tensing up with how to do vibrato without tensing how to play loud music with a huge projecting sound and not tense not tense up so there's so many ways that you can apply this work in specific ways but first you have to learn the basics like what we're doing now that makes sense and does anybody else have any questions about this and jim sorry i didn't mean to cut you off were you going to say something oh no thanks for answering that with uh because this was a real hang-up i had when we were doing the cycle a few years ago, I, I, I had this problem. How do I find ease? All I find is tension, but I'm not looking. I, I need to feel ease outside of that and then try and think of places it's in my body. Is that right? Or just, you said, okay. think of it holistically? So there are two steps. One is getting curious about ease in your body, the way we did with the islands. Yeah. Practice that by itself. That's called EMA. EMA. Right? And then a separate thing is the cycle. Yes. That's when you just ask the question after each number on the fingers, but don't go down into your body to try to find anything. It's much easier than that. Okay. You just got easier right now. It's like even just the, the idea of something being easy, yeah, you, you keep doing it. It's <laughs> lovely to watch. Okay. I mean, it's very, your, your system is already so there. Okay. Don't think about it. Just do it. <laughs> is that, yeah, just do it as an experiment this way, where you're not trying to feel anything in the body. Just send your question up and out again and again and again. Don't try to feel anything. Okay. If you, if your body starts to let go and relax, great, but don't look for it. Just let it happen. Okay. It's easier than you think. I think that's. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you. Does anybody else have any comments or questions related to what we just did? Does it make sense to everybody else how you can work on this and how this works? Yeah, great. Chris, go for it. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? Tim had his hand up for a long time. Is that on purpose or is that because you don't? Oh. Well, I just put it back up. I decided the, the earlier purpose was not purposeful enough. Um, thank you. Wonderful thing here. Uh, I'm going to go in a few minutes, but uh, I just want to say this seem, seem. In fact, you mentioned some Japanese stuff. It seems sort of Zen Buddhist. Are we to expect someone in an orange robe with a stick to walk up and beat us any minute or what? <laughs> you probably know where that comes from, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, okay, that's that's reassuring. Someone might bop you on the head with a feather, but <laughs> All right. no rattan sticks or anything like that, right? Yeah, this is oh, a okay. all, this is a yeah different kind of thing. Relatively nonviolent. Definitely nonviolent. <laughs> In case you wonder how my knee got messed up, you know. <laughs> Uh oh! <laughs> Somebody whacked. Anyway, wonderful class. Well, you know, karate is where your friends beat you up so other people can't, right? Yeah, my <laughs> kid taekwondo, and it had it was a double-edged sword. It was a, the best thing, and also a little <laughs> funny. Yeah, well, you, you understand this. I do. Thank you so much for coming, Tim. It was really nice. Thank you. Me. Wonderful class. Great stuff. Appreciate it. Thank you. And um, Chris, did he, oh, there you are. Yeah, I, I just want to say I've known Jennifer for a little over a year now, and uh, I've been taking her class, and I feel like this has been probably the best explanation and presentation of what we do and what you do, uh, and in uh, finding the ease that I've ever seen. So I just think that it was, it was fantastic, and thank you, and thank everybody for being here. You know, you just made my day, Chris. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, what is reassuring to me is that, yes, I can improve also. <laughs> so thanks for that. Thank you. Yeah, Glenn, your hand was up. 
Yes, well, I wanted to say the same thing. And, uh, you know, it was very succinct and clear. And even though I've, I've um, been working with you for a little while as well, um, I, I, I found a lot of benefit in that. And I would love you to do the same thing on Thursday with my group. Uh, I can't promise I can repeat this. <laughs> <laughs> might be even better on Thursday. <laughs> <Hooray>. <laughs> I am giving a workshop for Glenn's saxophone group on Thursday, so that should be fun. Yeah, um, you know what? I just remembered, uh, there is one more thing I did want to address before we end. And then of course, if you have more questions or ideas that come up, that's totally fine. But I wanna make sure to just say this, um, <laughs> because I do actually try to, to stick to what I promised in a workshop the best I can. And I promised to help you enjoy your music more. And I'm not so sure I was really very explicit about that. I, I tried to, to address it a little bit in the beginning, but I wanna make it even more clear now about how that works and what I mean by that. So when you're, let's say for listeners, Okay, because there were some non-musicians here, and I know Janice is over there too, <laughs> not, not a musician. Um, so, but musicians, non-musicians, we all want to enjoy what we hear more, whether it's our own music or someone else's, okay? Now, I did also say at one point that I think um, enjoyment is, it's like a birthright, it's, it's in us. Love and joy is our essence. This is my personal belief and experience, but I also have come to a deeper realization recently, and I just talked about this with my class on Saturday, and I made a little Facebook post about it. Um, people talk about happiness being a choice all the time, and I do believe that. I believe happiness is a choice. However, I think it's also a skill and sometimes people are just born better at things than others. And sometimes it's easier to feel happy than others. It's easier for some people to feel happy than others. But we all get to work on it. <laughs> it's possible to get better at it. I truly believe it's a skill, but the actual skill is in noticing when you're blocking your happiness. And the same goes with when we're blocking what we're receiving. And so much of what's out there in the world is actually really wonderful. We tend to, we have a negative bias, negativity bias built into our brains. It's how the human body brain is designed for survival we're meant to be that, that way and thank goodness because we survive thanks to that negativity bias it keeps us away from truly harmful things like tigers i don't know maybe in kenya they have tigers but it's always an example that we have <laughs> we always talk about tigers even though we don't have any tigers right? <laughs> you don't have any tigers either good <laughs> right. so yeah anyway we have a survival. Yeah, yes, we have lions. Lions. Yes, we have lions. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we'll use lions in this example. So I don't want to trigger you, right? <laughs> so anyway, you know, the brain is designed to help us survive. So we're going to notice the negative things. I've heard like six times as much as the positive. The problem is that if we're noticing the negative so much, and we get triggered and startled by it and we don't know how to let go of the startle pattern like animals do animals will get startled and they will be on hype they'll be hyper vigilant and alert all the time because they could be eaten by a lion right unless they're a lion and then they have no fear because they're so big and powerful they have no fear um I'm, i don't know i'm imagining that but animals know how to go into startle and then they, sh they literally shake it off when the, the danger is gone. We, the animal part of our brain has that too, but we tend to override it because of ways that we've been taught, the ways we've been brought up, the ways we've been socialized, our educational system, 
all kinds of reasons. There's there are tons of reasons why we override the startle and or or we allow the startle happens. There's nothing we can do to prevent prevent that, and we don't want to prevent it. Okay, but we will get triggered by things that are not actually dangerous a lot of the time. So this work that we're, that I'm teaching you, it was just a, a taste today. This work helps you to lower your stress levels, helps you to be more open, and it will help you to more accurately assess when something is actually a threat or not. So you're not going to get triggered as easily by things that aren't. But when you do get triggered, you're going to notice that you're triggered sooner. So if you're just triggered a little bit, like when you walk on stage and you're not paying attention to that, and then you play and suddenly you can't play in tune anymore and you have no idea why, because everything worked in the practice room, but then you're on stage and suddenly everything falls apart and you don't know why, you get to notice the subtle ways that you're triggered sooner, like way before you walk on stage. In fact, the night, the morning of the, the concert or the night before or the month before, that's when you start to work on performance anxiety right? You notice the subtle ways that you're triggered, and then you have the tools to think differently to let go of that so that you're no longer in the startle pattern and you're not carrying around all that excess tension all day long, every day, which is what causes so many of our health problems, so much pain that could be avoided just because we're carrying around too much tension that we're not even aware of. So back to how does this help us enjoy music more? It's hard to enjoy life if you're carrying around a layer of tension. It's hard to feel feelings deeply because there's like a, a wall, there's a protective barrier that you've learned for survival's sake to protect you from feeling things that are really unpleasant and hard to feel that you don't really wanna feel. And this can happen from the time that we're very little and it's nobody's fault that we carry around this layer of tension. There's no judgment whatsoever. But most of the tension we're carrying around is we don't need it anymore. We're not in a survival life or death situation most of the time in our daily life here where we live, right? And so you want to be able to walk through life feeling free. And when you let go of those layers, your natural, joyful, energetic, happy, bright, effusive self can come out. And then you can connect with people. You can hear, you can take in the sounds, you hear more, you get more of the overtones, like more of the sound actually can feed your brain and stimulate your nervous system. And then you're not blocking those vibrations from going through your entire system. When you're tense, you block vibrations, I imagine. I might be wrong about that. I'm sure we vibrate anyway, but then we don't like the feeling. It's like, because we can't let ourselves feel too good either. We don't wanna feel too bad, but then we don't let ourselves feel too good. It's all scary. So little by little by little, you learn to let go of that layer of tension so you can let things in and let them move you, literally. You let the vibrations in. When you're playing your own instrument, you let the vibration, the physical vibration of the violin travel through your entire system. It travel, bones are incredible sound conductors. Like the sound vibrations travel through your whole system. And if you're not blocking it, it's like blissful to feel all those vibrations. I love how you're nodding, Jim. I know this is why it makes you happy, right? And so the more you let go of the stuff, which is all, it comes from how we're thinking, when you let go of all that, you don't have to let go of physical tension. Notice how you're thinking and choose to think differently and the body follows your thoughts. In the Alexander Technique, traditionally, we're always talking about how the head leads and the body follows. Well, what leads the head? Our thoughts, our desires, our goals, the mind. We need to actually go to the source and the body will follow. We don't have to work on the body directly. We need to pay attention to how are you thinking? How are you feeling? What's actually going on in your whole system? If you like it, keep doing what you're doing. 
if there's something you want to change or something you want to get better at, this go back to the source. And actually, it includes the heart too. It's not just the mind, it's an integrated whole system. But the way in for us is to use our thinking to think differently to get different results in the body. So no matter whether you're listening or you're playing your instrument, you're absolutely going to enjoy it more if you are not blocking the enjoyment of it. So I think the enjoyment is just natural. So just we just need to do a lot less. Okay, so that's my little spiel. I needed to say that because I feel like I didn't really give everybody, you know, what I said they would get, even though they're going to get it, but they don't know it. <laughs> so now you know it. <laughs> if you do the cycle twice a day, that's a really, really great. Story. But it's also only the first of dozens of awareness etudes. And it's the first one and one of the only ones that doesn't have any movement. The next one, for example, includes your arms, like how do you move to play your instrument without blocking and creating tension? And then violinists, how do you play without squeezing and jaw tension and neck chant tension? And how do you hold up that instrument for a long period of time without getting sore? You know, all those things is that's what we address with the awareness attitudes and much more with the art of freedom method and primal Alexander. In fact, the details of how to play an instrument happen in level two, even more than level one. So any last questions and or comments from anybody here? <laughs> thank you, Chris. <laughs> Great class. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Happy Alexander Technique Awareness Month. Um, sign up for a free consultation if you want one. I'd love to talk to you personally. And if you want 50% off my intro course, that's a really good deal. And I don't do that very often. So you might want to ask me about it. By the, by the I've, I've, I've posted a, a question on the chats. Oh, sorry. Is the second last one. Sorry, I didn't see that. Let me just see. Um, can you easily let go of the tension or does it take a big life-changing experience that forces you to let go of the tension? Oh, wait. Yeah, that's your question. That's an easy answer. Yes, you can easily let go of the tension and you can do it right now. Right now, like for example, when you say uh, sometimes happiness is not a choice, maybe like it's not a choice if we let go of the tension. If you have like, like, like you can't tell somebody like when they have tension that, that it's a choice that they can just do immediately like that. That's true. There's absolutely no judgment and tension happens from habit it's usually unconscious. And sometimes it's conscious too, but there's no judgment about tension. Tension is not a bad thing, okay? A lot of times we think it's a bad thing, but it's a protection. It's a good thing because po some part of our brain thinks we need to do that to protect ourselves. So if you notice tension, you can actually thank your body for protecting you. Okay, it's not a bad thing. The problem is when we have habitual tension that happens unconsciously when we don't need it. Because when there's tension there, it's harder to feel the joy and happiness and wonderfulness of everything because we, we can only feel part of it. Does that make sense? So when you- yeah, Yes. Good. So when you start to let go of the tension little by little, it just happens that over time you get happier. This is what happens to my students. They just get happier when they do this, even if they're not my student officially, if they do the cycle you know, re re regularly, if they do constructive thinking throughout the day, just getting curious, bringing the attention back to yourself and wondering about ease, you can ask, all right, what's already working in me? Where's the flow inside of me already? Where is the joy and happiness inside of me already? You don't, maybe you won't feel it right away, but you keep asking and you keep being curious without expecting to feel any different right now. But it's a practice, it's a skill, you practice it. And the more you do, do that, 
the more your brain goes, oh, that must be something that's important to Jennifer. Maybe we'll start to give her that experience. And the, it's like the brain, it gets the idea of what you want and it starts to give you what you want, but not on your timeline, right? It, it's not gonna necessarily happen immediately depending on your habits and your experience. But I promise if you keep getting curious about easing and joy inside yourself without expectation, over time, you get it. It just happens because you're made that way. And when you let go of what's blocking it, it can start to flow inside of you. It's natural to be happy, but life does make it hard sometimes. Okay, I, I understand. Thank you. Oh, good. I'm so glad that that made sense to you. Yeah, and feel free to you know send me questions. Are you in my Facebook group? I think I saw. Yes, you. I, I am. Great. Yeah, I'm so glad you're there. Anybody who doesn't know about my Facebook group, you can always ask questions in there also, and I'm easy to find. So feel free to ask me anything. Okay. All right. Thanks. And I think I'm going to sign off today for now. All right. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care.